Yeah, it's been a really long time. Yeah, it's so good to finally catch up. I know. Hey, do you guys need anything? Um, I can actually use some salt. Awesome, we'll be right back. Hey, thank you. Yeah, how have you been? Um, I've been really well. Um, you know, work is going the same way, okay. school's going well. Everything's really on the up and up. Yeah. All right, just don't need anything else, all right? Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, no! April Fool's Day 2016, motherfuckers! <laughs> Laugh track and field starts now! The Laugh Track and Deal presents Trying Our Hardest Comedy Extravaganza Variety Comedy Show here on April Fool's Day in the Union Theater. And now, put your hands together for our starting lineup. Standing at six foot nine. Weighing in at 420 pounds. At point guard, Julia, unnaturally hot blonde truck. At shooting guard, standing at 69, 420 pounds. Great, willing participant, Hearn. At security guard, standing at 6 foot 9, 420 pounds. Hanson, follow him at Kung Pao Chow Chow. At Color Bar, standing at 6 foot 9, 420 pounds. Peyton, can I get ranch dressing with that? Lumsky. At Coast Guard, standing at 6 foot 9, 420 pounds. Evan. Mixtape on the way, work now. At body. Standing with six foot nine and four hundred and twenty pounds. Jake. This part was meant for Martin, but Jake can do it tonight, I guess. Rowdy. At Crossing Guard. Standing with six foot nine and four hundred and twenty pounds. Matt. Proud of his toe thumbs, Matt Matt. On it. Standing at six foot nine, four hundred and twenty pounds. Caroline, what's the bear? Kiss Miller. At Guardian of the Galaxy, standing at six foot nine, four hundred and twenty pounds. It's Maggie, I can't, I have rehearsal. Harrington. At National Guard. Standing at 6 foot 9, 420 pounds. Jake, Dirty Teen, Lewis. At LaGuardia International Airport. Standing at 6 foot 9. 420 pounds. Tucker. Justin Williford. Parker. And the coach, as well as playing Buckingham Palace guard, Justin, the love business dream. Checking field at some point in the past. Raise your hand. Yeah. We're not doing that today. You know, all that, uh, all that improv for an hour and a half we normally do, not today. We're giving you a little bit of sketch comedy. We're giving you a little bit of improv comedy. We're giving you, uh, we're giving you a little bit of uh, a, a stand-up comedy. It's going to be a little bit of everything, and we're going to end it all tonight with a little bit of long-form improv. It's going to be a great show. I'm super excited about it. There's a lot of really talented actors and a lot of really talented writers on this team. And I feel like you guys have just never gotten to see the full range of Laugh Track and Phil, uh, for better or for worse. Guys, we take you now to HBO Kids. <laughs> All right, uh, everybody, if we could go ahead and get serious, please. We're going to go ahead and start the callbacks here very soon, okay? Now, 
Now we would like to say you all should be very proud of the work you've done so far, okay? Very impressive work all around. Launching a new television network, it's never easy, okay? All right, it's never easy. Especially a new HBO network, are you kidding? What? Hard. All right, anyway. Because of you guys, though, you talented little kids, you little rascals, I know it's going to be great. Proud of you guys. Let's go ahead and get this thing started here soon, okay? Okay, so the director has not taken his eyes off me since I walked in. Okay, Mama's going to get this for you. Ew, no! Mom! <laughs> So it's Stint as the really dead kid in Law and Order SVU. <laughs> said that the few deeds of a few great men would change the world? Well, the bitch was lying! <laughs> fuck Lincoln! Fuck Caesar! Fuck Gandhi! The world keeps moving because of you and me. The Anonymous. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really good, Zach. You really sort of encompass what the show Oz was all about. That's really nice. <laughs> I'm wondering, though, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you with something. I'm wondering if I can see you, maybe just the last paragraph, maybe. But just do the very last part like you are messed up on heroin. Okay. Okay? okay. Like, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not, like, not, you're not dabbling in heroin. Just, I'm saying you're like fucking messed up on heroin. You know what I'm <laughs> All right, okay, try that. Try that one. Zach Knight, uh, scene 14, take two. <laughs> Little bitch! The bitch was lying! Yeah, yeah, fuck Lincoln! Fuck Caesar! Fuck Gandhi! <laughs> Cause the world, it, it runs on me and, and you and the anonymous. Really good, really good, thank you so much. <laughs> I felt it, I felt it. Frank, is this, is this just gonna be a, like a remake of already existing HBO shows, but like with little children? <laughs> I guess I just thought, like, HBO Kids, you know, like, Nick Jr., kid from the programming, you know, not, not this. Do we, we have Spielberg. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Do you know who he is? Do you hear what I said? I hear what you said. Spielberg! <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready to go? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's let's uh let's see scene eight. Scene eight, please, for Dewey. Dewey Hall, Game of Thrones, scene eight, take one. <laughs> How do I want to die, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. In my own uh dang uh, bed, uh, with a bottle of uh, water <laughs> and a girl's mouth right around my uh, um. Oh gosh, um, you, you know. <laughs> Dewey, Dewey, I'm gonna stop you there. I wanna hold the improv until later. Please, we'll get to that later. So if you could just do the line, the last part. The last part of the line. Frank, can I just talk to you for a second? Yeah, catch up with you. Hey, listen, I'm just, I'm not comfortable saying these lines in front of. Oh, the girl's mother? Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess it's Zach's mom, but I, either way, she's, given, she's been eyeing me up and down ever since we came in here. No, not the mother, no, the kids! I'm not comfortable saying these lines around children. What? Listen, Dewey, Dewey, my, 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 my friend, Dewey, listen, okay? These kids, they're professionals. You don't gotta worry about them. Zach, Zach has been working since he could walk, all right? And Carol, Carol, she's insanely talented. She just booked the brand new Quentin Tarantino, Samuel L. Jackson film, Bitch, shut that damn bitch up and ride that horse. <laughs> it's a western. <laughs> well, sure, yeah. I mean, that's that's classic Tarantino. I I kill to be in one of. Hey, wait a minute, no, that's not the point. It's not about Tarantino. It's these are children, right? It's weird. All right, listen. Here we go. If, you, if you're not comfortable, Dewey, why don't you take a second? You kind of refocus. We'll come back to you in a second. All right? That sound good? Sure. Okay, taking a break then. All right. Uh, can we go ahead and move on to the duo scenes, please? Uh, would, would you guys mind starting this off, please, Zach and Carol? Yes, sir. And uh, can I just say, sir, what an honor this is? Really, sir, you are a shining beacon for other television directors doing remakes of previously good premium network shows. Thank you very much, Carol. Uh, enough. Thank you. Thank you so much for that sentiment. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the scene, please. Thank you. Uh, Zach Knight and Carol Renee Brown, The Wire, scene two, take one. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Kiss me, 
Bye. Nope, not gonna do it. I'm leaving. Bye. Bye. This is wrong. All right, uh, congratulations, I guess, to uh, Zach and Carol. Uh, we're going to start tomorrow morning with Sex in the City. <laughs> Hanson Chow. Uh, Hanson Chow is just the funniest guy I know. He's amazing. Uh, we actually joined together around the same time a year ago. And uh, one thing you might not know about him is that he's actually an expert juggler. study abroad trip. Oh, half of you are leaving. All right. Um, no. Look, usually I'd be the one groaning about, you know, a study abroad trip, but, you know, I, what I'm going to be telling you is actually not like this, wow, this is not like, um, what I'm going to be telling you is not like some pedantic exploration of multicultural, uh, I'm going to be telling you about the terrible things that happened to me in Europe. <laughs> So we're going to start off uh, with uh, public transportation. So I'm from Benton, Arkansas. Uh, so, oh, little Benton people here, very nice. Uh, yeah, so I'm not really familiar with public transportation, but that's like everything over there. So I'm, you know, kind of a newbie, so I sit down on the train and I want to learn from these people. Well, I sit down, we're going to Scotland, so I sit next to a very fine Scottish man. And, you know, here's a problem I have. I'll be doing impressions later in the show. I tend to accidentally mimic people. <laughs> like, I walk into a convenience store in Arkansas. You hear me talking right now. But uh, I'll walk into a convenience store in Arkansas. I'll be like, well, I reckon it's time for my cows to go to pasture before the tornadoes roll in. And not, you know, and not meaning any offense. It just happens. <laughs> So I sit down on the train next to this fine Scottish man, and he looks out the window, and rain is pouring because it's England. <laughs> and he says, uh, he says, oh, looks like there's a storm brewing. Which, first of all, he's from Scotland, so that's just like the most Scottish thing you can say. Not like, there's a, it looks like rain, it's, there's a storm brewing. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, uh, time to uh, talk back. I say, I. <laughs> I don't say I when I'm talking here, but for some reason I decided it's a great idea to say I to this Scottish man. So he turns around to me and says, Oh, you're from Scotland! Where are you from, laddie? <laughs> well, I'm not going to lie to this man. He looks like he could cut my throat. <laughs> and all Scottish men do. But, so, there are no Scottish people here, I hope. <laughs> but so, I, I, I have to think, uh, wow, okay, let's think. Uh, well, my parents had a Scotty dog once, and they called it, uh, there's a town in Scotland, they, its name was Abbey, they called it after a town in Scotland, Aberdeen. Hope this is still a town. Oh, I'm from Aberdeen, sir. Oh, I've got family in Aberdeen! <laughs> Who are your relatives with? Well, this whole thing continues on for 30 minutes. <laughs> and I can't get out of this lie at this point, so... I left the wife and two kids back in Scotland. <laughs> so, yeah, bad, bad time. So, this same train ride, mind you, we're going, uh, actually, I lied, we're not going to Scotland, we're going to Oxford, England. And there's a stop along the way to Oxford with a silly little name called Didcot. 
And you know, I was like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> but I get off to go to the stop. And so they make the trains in like 1836. So you go to get out of the train, you have to reach out the window and open the door. And that really just doesn't really work when the door's locked. Well, I'm trying to get off the train and the door's locked. So I turn over and there's a station master coming down. They call him that over there. It really is just, it's a good role to have the station master. And so he walks over to me and the whistle blows on the train. I'm like, I have to get off of this train or I'm going somewhere I don't know. And he looks me in the eye and without missing a beat goes, well, it looks like you're out of time now, aren't you? <laughs> so that's how I got left on a train. So we didn't really have any more mishaps on the rest of the trip until I went to Paris. I got mugged in Paris. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, the Paris people would not mug you. And I'm be like, oh, we oui, oui, do not have baguette. Oh. And that, that's not actually what happened. So I was trying to go to church, specifically a church, uh, on top of this hill that like overlooks the beautiful scenic Paris skyline. And everyone in Paris is trying to pick your pocket or rob you in some way, so you just kind of develop this awareness that big groups of people are good to avoid. And so there's this big group of guys in front of me, and they're all chattering about something, so I get the bright idea, hey, I'm in Europe, Spain is here, there are white people in Spain, I'm going to pretend I speak Spanish. So I walk past them and they try to talk to me and I say, no hablo francais. That is not convincing to anyone who lives in Europe. So they grab me and say, no, 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 you are American, I am going to help you. So they grab me by the arm and start tying my arm up, which is, you know, a lot of red flags go up there. <laughs> and so I, you know, I'm like, okay, this is fine, I'm just working on it. And I uh, realized that they haven't taken my wallet in this course, so I'll let them play. Well, I say, I'm not going to buy anything from you, and you're not going to take money from me, which I feel like is the appropriate thing to say when someone's tying up your arm. And they say, no, 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 do not be like the Chinese, you are American. What? <laughs> he says, so, you are American, you know of Akuna Matata, I am from Kenya, no worries. What? <laughs> so I feel like, well, first of all, that is a wonderful thing to say before you commit a crime. Go rob a bank. Oh, no worries. Akuna Matata. I'm going to hold you up at gunpoint. Akuna Matata. Oh, well, I'm relieved now. Uh, yeah, so this really bothers me, but you know, whatever. I'm going to let him do his thing. So he finishes tying this bracelet, and I say, how much? Knowing that I'm only going to give him, like, five euros. And he says, oh, not much. Take out wallet. That's a little red flag going up again. <laughs> So I take out my wallet and he says, it will be 40 euro. That's like $84. It's not, it's like 50, but it, feel, it felt like $84 to a college student. So I hand him a 20 and he's, I was like, that's how much I'm going to give you. Well, two of his buddies put their hands on my shoulders and squeeze really hard. And he says, no, 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 American, it will be 20 more. Oh. All right, well, this isn't worth dying over and seeing as Interpol are all busy chasing art thieves. I'm not getting any help right now. So I handed him another 20, deciding this isn't worth dying over. But that made me really mad, because that 40 euros was going to pay for my ticket to go see Versailles, and I didn't get to go. I know. Oh. But I get this bracelet for 40 freaking euros. <sighs> And I just like, I, I, I'm so mad at this guy, but you know, I can't really chase him down because he's like 6'11 and built like a tow truck. And he, you know, I, I just let it go. But all of this struggle has been over this one bracelet. And I'm going to show it with you because I keep it with me all the time as a trophy of getting mugged. <laughs> this is a 40 euro bracelet. <laughs> Thank you so much. We are now going to open up with a, a, a foray into TV Land's classic show, Classic TV Classics. Please give it up. <laughs> Tracy to Trace. That's me. 
Today we will examine a long forgotten gem in the television lore. Founded in 1986, Video Fun Time Now featured side splitting home videos sent in by viewers. It even coined the phrase that you all use today roll that clip. Let's take a look. Dad's hitting the nuts, baby's being scared, and ever seen a cat bake a cake? I'm Jen. And I'm Joey. We have all that and more tonight live on Video Fun Time Now. We have a great show lined up for you tonight, and can I just say that I, for one, am thrilled to be here. Now, Joey, before we get started, did I hear that you had a unique experience this week? That you did. Uh, last night, I actually saw that new Top Gun flick, and uh, it was amazing. I joined the volleyball team as soon as I left the theater. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Joey. Now let's get to those clips. We have a delightful collection of home movies sent in from our viewers, and we're about to review them. So let's go ahead and roll that clip. You can go ahead and roll it now. Yeah, let's roll, roll that, that clip. clip. Like, like Frank, you like we have the clips. It works. We, we have them, right, Frank? Frank's our producer, and he'll have the clip. The, the clip, please, Frank? Frank, the, the clip, just roll it. <laughs> Frank, uh, okay, uh, I know you can't see Frank right now, audience, so I'm just gonna kind of describe to you what Frank's doing. Frank's making a lot of wild gestures. Uh, oh, come yeah, on, Frank. He's, he's kind of mouthing, we're live, over and over again, and he, he's, he's panting and waving his hands wildly. Man, I thought I'd come out here and, uh, you know, check the wires and the cables and the screens and make sure everything's uh, working properly. I, I hear you guys can't make the clip roll, so I'm just going to take a real quick look back. Ah! 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 My collarbone! Remarkable. Ah! Remarkable. Yes, the show was originally bemoaned by critics who said things like, why can't they roll the clip? And not enough John Stamos. <laughs> of course, the show did garner some praise in Joshy Jorshin, the TV repairman who broke his collarbone. The producers heard these criticisms, made some changes, and moved forward. Let's take a look at another clip. Moms being reckless, teens slipping on ice, and have you ever seen a cat eat a cake? I'm Joey. And I'm Jen. And we've got a great show ahead tonight. So let's go ahead and get started. It's time to roll that clip! Frank! The clips just aren't working, Frank. When we tried this previously, it worked. Yeah, in rehearsal, we say, roll that clip! And we do the gestures, and it works, and now nothing. Yeah, Frank, it's just not appearing on the screen. I wish we had someone who could help us. You guys are having trouble with the screens again. So. Why don't you go ahead and take a seat, Jossie? No, I'm just kind of here to we fix it. The... Just, just okay, all oh, right, okay, fantastic. So, all right. you've been working here for what, 20, 30 years now? Uh, uh, no, I just started three months ago. We're like the same age. You guys, <laughs> no, we're not, we're all right, okay. <laughs> so, Joshy, uh, I have your uh, work file from HR right here. Well, uh, no, wait, how did you get my. How did you get my personal file? Um, we are actors, Joshy. It wasn't that hard. Well, I, I, that just doesn't, I don't uh, Go ahead, show them the thing you did, James. The impression thing we got. The... My son, my Joshy, he's so sick and I have to get my hands on this file. Oh my God, you pretended to, to, to be my mom to get a hold of my personal file? Who's pretending? You have to admit, Joshy, that was classic <laughs> your mom. Okay, this all seems <laughs> this all seems very just personal. Shut up, just okay, shut up, okay. okay, well. Okay. So it says here in your file that mm -hmm. you have filed twelve workers' comp claims since you started working here. Would you say that you're a little clumsy? I mean, maybe a little bit, but the, all, those weren't all necessarily. Um, you know, they weren't all. Uh, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Did you guys. You guys fake a technical problem to get me out here in hopes that I would trip and fall and hurt myself again? What? I have never been 
so Yes, that's it. exactly. Oh my god, I cannot believe this. This is, this is, I'm through. I am done with this. I'm out of here. Frank? 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 You see me, Frank? You see me? <laughs> Frank, I am sick of these bullshit shenanigans, okay? Fra Frank, okay? I'm out of here. You know what? I'm sick of this. I am out of here. I'm not gonna. Ah! Ah! Fuck! My other telephone! Ah, shit! Ah! Remarkable. In one fall, both reality TV and TV censorship were invented. <laughs> yes, eventually, eventually the show abandoned the home video format and turned into a well-received sitcom with Joshy Jorshin playing the lead and Jen and Joey playing supporting cast members. So let's take a look now at the critically acclaimed Full Video Fun Time Now House. <laughs> Oh, honey, is that you? Yeah, I got home from work early. What's going on in here? Ma, oh, she's trying to bake a cake, but this oven won't start. Oh, but sweetie, that cake you made last night was so delicious until you dropped all the ingredients all over the kitchen floor. Oh. But wait, <laughs> is the stove not working? Does that mean we're gonna have to call? Did somebody say I'm a pair man? <laughs> <laughs> seasons and nine more after that. Oh, yes. Jen went on to win an Academy Award for cinematography. Joey would go on to invent Uber. He didn't trademark it in time, but he invented it. And as for Joshy, little Joshy Jorshin. Joshy tragically met his end after years of real and fake falling. On the final day of filming, he passed away due to multiple sustained head injuries. Nobody even knew that was a thing. <laughs> Joshy Joshin, gone too soon. <laughs> For Classic TV Classics, I'm Tracy DeTrace. Good night and travel well. <laughs> Hey guys, you all know Evan Wardlaw, but did you know that he's an English professor, professor here? Did you also know he's a philosophy major? But most importantly, did you know he's an amazing poet? You know, my family is great. My daughter's an otter, but greatest of all, Hanson's my father. Oh, and he's my father too! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again for Tucker Partridge, the man with a thousand voices and just as many XYs. It's the Impressions Game with Tucker! This week's contestant, Hanson Chow! Okay, no problem. You'll soon find out how appropriate that was. Now listen up, we all know how this game is played. This game is played as Tucker is going to do an impression. You'll hold this. Tucker's gonna do an impression. We're gonna pull uh, an impression out of the hat, and Tucker's gonna have to do the impression. At that point, Hanson is going to also do that impression. It's gonna be great. <laughs> the, uh, the, you can do a good impression, you can do a bad impression, you'll probably do a bad impression, but what's important here to understand <laughs> is that as long as you do an impression, as long as you don't do nothing, everything will be okay. But if you do nothing, you forfeit, and this audience will hate you. <laughs> no pressure, guys. Let's see what we have first. Our first impression is going to be Patrick Warburg. 
You all know Patrick Warburton, you just don't know you know him because you've watched TV before. Uh, if you've watched Family Guy, he plays Joe in you know, the wheelchair drop. Or if you've watched uh, Emperor's New Groove, he plays Kronk. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basically, what we're dealing with here, Goosego, is we're going to get boots, guess points, and the poison Goosego. Goosego, poison, shrimp, by spinach, by beer, I'm in a wheelchair. <laughs> And now Hanson's gonna do the exact same thing, just as well, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna do the, um, the, with the deep voice and the couscous and the Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, it's a jam! <laughs> Your second impression today is going to be Seth Rogen. This is easy, because I kind of look like him. <laughs> Marijuana! <laughs> I'm just trying to go get some. <laughs> yeah! Are we all? Yeah! Hansel, are you trying to get marijuana? I can't answer that in the university setting. <laughs> um, but I'll do the impression. Okay, here we go. I can do a, I can do a pretty good one. Uh, uh, what's the This is the same impression I did. What's the secret password? 420! Right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And our final uh, impression before the final impression, the penultimate impression is going to be Morgan Freeman. Yeah. I bought a box of Girl Scout cookies today. And my favorite Girl Scout cookie is, of course, the trefoil. Because it's a shortbread cookie, and we had plenty of those back in Mississippi. <laughs> and you all know what happens now. <laughs> well, I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to talk in a deeper voice, maybe. Just a little too deep, maybe higher. I... Now, what's fun about this game show is that we never know exactly what's going to be in the hat. Our contestants did not see these coming. The last impression you need to do today, gentlemen, is stereotypical Asian man. <laughs> Take it away, Tucker! Take it away, Tucker! You know? I'm going to concede that I'm going to let Hanson start this round. The guy, don't, I'm taking it easy on him. Sure. <laughs> okay, I think we all know how this is going to go, but whatever. Hanson, give us your best attempt at this impression. <laughs> oh, Taco! What's wrong? Oh, what's wrong? It's okay, Taco. It's okay. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm okay. Okay, Taco, you're good to go. He said it's okay. Tucker, take it away, Asian gentlemen. <laughs> I would rather concede than win this round. In a shocking twist, Hanson Charles are our freshman champion this week. <laughs> She's from L.A., which is no surprise, because, of course, she's a superstar. But did you know that she sings? <laughs> <laughs> she dances. Get it, girl. And she's also, and this is the coolest thing. You know what it is? OK, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. She's my biological father. <laughs> <laughs> And now give it up for all of our dads, Jake Lewis doing stand up. Hey guys. 
Uh, so I was in New York last year, and one of the big tourist trap things is to get like shirts and stuff with offensive things written on them to the point where like there were some shirts that just said fuck on them. Uh, and by wearing that shirt, you show people that you don't. Uh, but uh, I was in this uh, I was in this bookstore. And they had this book bag, uh, this, this tote bag. Yeah, I bought a tote bag. I own several. We're here to laugh, not judge. Uh, but there was a quote by John Waters on it, and uh, it says, If you go home with someone and they don't have books, don't fuck them. Uh, my parents were thrilled when I thought it. Uh, but uh, the most awkward part of that was uh, I actually took it to my Mimi's house when I visited her that summer. Um, and I love my Mimi to death, but she looked at it and she says, Oh, Jacob, what does that book bag say? And I was like, she's a cool Mimi. She's a hit Mimi. I can tell her whatever I want to. Uh, so uh, I said, well, Mimi, it says, if you go home with someone and they don't have books, don't fuck them. Uh, and my Mimi looks at me and says, well, Jacob, you know what that means, don't you? And I said, no. <laughs> I mean, I guess I knew what it meant, but like, it was so like, easy to see. I guess there was some hidden context I wasn't getting. Uh, and so she looked me in the eyes and she said, well, well, Jacob, what it means is that if you go home with someone that don't have books, you shouldn't sleep with them. <laughs> Which is the first and hopefully only time I've had to look my grandmother in the eyes and say, Mimi, I know what fucking is. <laughs> What's that, sir? You, you'd like me to summarize Judy Bloom's 1970 novel, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret? Is, is that what you're asking me for? Awesome, that was next in my set. Great timing. Uh, so recently I sped read through uh, the Judy Bloom book, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, uh, and it's really fucked up. Uh, so the story follows Margaret, the titular character, as she talks to God. Uh, Margaret's 12 and she really wants her period. It gets weirder. Uh, so Margaret's writing these like really desperate letters to God asking for a period. Uh, and she's also got this friend Nancy, and Nancy's a bitch. I mean, most 12 year old girls are, but. Uh, so Nancy's like, whatever, I already got my period. It was real cool. I bled and stuff. And Margaret was like, I wish I could be cool like Nancy. Here's the thing though. Nancy was lying. <laughs> Margaret and Nancy go out to dinner with Nancy's family, and Margaret goes to the bathroom because Nancy's taking a little too long. And Margaret says, Nancy, what's wrong? And Nancy says, I'm bleeding from my vagina! <laughs> and instead of thinking, oh, I should help her, Margaret goes, I knew she was lying. And it's like, what the fuck, Margaret? <laughs> There's a time and a place to be angry at your friend for lying about her period, and when it is happening is not the time. <laughs> So she proceeds to grab Nancy's mom, and Nancy's mom is like, here's a sanitary nap, can you do this and this? And Margaret's just sort of like smirking like a fucking bitch. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's not the only friend she has. Uh, she has another friend who's a total dumbass, and I forget her name, but we're gonna call her Schmargaret. Uh, so Margaret, Nancy, and Schmargaret are all at Schmargaret's house. Schmargaret's dad is a doctor, so they steal his anatomy book. And they're flipping through it, and Schmargaret says, Is that what the boy I like looks like when he doesn't have his clothes on? And I said, Oh, they're looking at a penis! Power of deduction, correct? <laughs> Here's the thing, though. They flip to the next page, and that was the penis. So I thought, what were they looking at before? So I reread that first page, and turns out they were looking at a map of the central nervous system. So fucking Schmargaret's over there going, that's what it looks like! Is there just a collection of things that make me feel? What it is or tickle if he takes his shirt off? <laughs> and like, whatever, fucking Schmargaret, she's a girl, she doesn't have a penis, I can get that. Um, so they're talking and uh, apparently Margaret brought her dad's Playboy. So they open that up and they look at this girl and they look at her boobs and they go, whoa, they look like that? I don't know if you're following, but these are three girls <laughs> looking at a pair of breasts, unaware as to what they are and or their function. <laughs> I myself am not a girl, but I would assume many of them know what breasts are. <laughs> 
And that's kind of where that scene ends, uh, which is even weirder. They're just like, well, well, and then they end the chapter, and they never speak about it again. Uh, the book ends, uh, Margaret finally gets her period. Uh, sorry if you guys were really dying to read this. Uh, <laughs> And uh, she goes to the bathroom, and there are specifically three drops of blood on her underwear. I say that because it was so specific, I thought I might not need to read these last ten pages. <laughs> and she goes, Mom, get in here! Like what I would do when I got the high score in Tetris. Uh, <laughs> and her mom says, what is it, sweetie? And she looks down and she says, oh... Oh, my little Margaret's becoming a woman. Oh, Margaret, here, take this sanitary pad. And she goes, Mom, shh. I already know. And then she like looks up to God, and God's like, Ah, oh, there you go, Margaret. Have fun till menopause. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, the thing that worried me uh, about this book, it's not, it's not you know, like a period thing. You know, I grew up with a sister. It's a natural, uh, natural part of life. It's that this book uh, very succinctly combines my two biggest fears, uh, children and vaginas. Uh, I am horrified of vaginas. It's why I don't keep books in my apartment. <laughs> All right, I'm messing up now, but this is thank you guys! in one hour, and I don't know my axes from my elbows, all right? Okay, you listening to me? What the ding-dong F am I going to do? <laughs> what am I going to do? really use some help. What am I going to do? Nope, he's not here. Okay, all right. He's not coming. Matt's not here, folks. He's left, I guess. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I had this whole sketch written out. It was called Math Magicians, and it was all about, you know, like, uh, I come out here, I'm like a kid. I need, like, help with my homework or something, and, uh, and he comes out, he's like a math, but he like knows a lot of math. He had this great voice, okay? He had this great voice in practice. It was like, oh, well, hello. I'm not going to do the voice. I don't want to do the voice, but, but it was really good. It was solid, it was so nice, and he's not even here to do, what am I gonna do? <laughs> nope, thought I'd try one more, one more time. Did not work, okay, great. Fantastic, all right, well I guess I'll just leave. I guess I'll just go. I hate this. Okay, well, you know what? All right, you know what, no, I'm not, you know what? Fuck Matt, okay? Because I asked him to be in this. I asked him to be in this. I could have asked anybody to be in this. I could have asked Tucker to be in this? You guys like Tucker? Yeah. I could ask Justin to be in this. Justin's great. Justin's fantastic. I could ask fucking Grant to be in this, but I didn't. I did not. I asked Matt, okay? And he's not even here. He's not even showing up. You know what? I don't care. It's, I'm just feeling sorry for you guys more than anything because it was so good. And whatever. Fine. Fuck it. Sorry, folks. Okay. Jake! 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 Wait! Jake! Wait! Get over Jake! Wait! Jake!
To make up for being late for your dumb sketch, Jacob! Okay, well, fine. I okay. said that. Okay, I, I know, I know, but it just kind of sounds like, uh, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this okay. one, okay? Right. It just kind of sounds like um, you were late for the sketch because you went to go pick up a cookie cake, mm -hmm. uh, but the only reason you were picking up the cookie cake yes. was to apologize for being late for the sketch. Yes. I just yes. quite don't. You know what I mean? Like yes, 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 good, very good, good. Now everyone here knows that you can follow plot points. Oh my God, Jay, great job. What does it mean? It just kind of seems like you could have not gotten the cookie cake and been on time for the sketch. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Boy, bitch, bastard, son of a bitch, bastard. I got you a goddamn cookie cake! <laughs> and now, and now all, all you've done is bitch since I got up here on the G Dang stop! I'm not bitching, okay? I'm not bitching. No one here is bitching. He's bitching. Okay? I'm not, I'm not bitching, okay? No one here is bitching, okay? It just kind of sounds like in your head you thought, oh, well, I'm going to be late for Jake's sketch, but I'm going to be going out to the bakery, his favorite bakery, Hearts. I'm going to pick him up a cookie cake, and then I'll make up for being late for the sketch, but I'm going to go right at the time that I should be. Sorry, that sounds... Yeah, that's... hey, Jake, stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Can you stop for a second? <laughs> because you're not going to believe this. That's the exact thing that I thought. Oh, my God! That's so weird. How did you know that? Because I went to the store and I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up this cake. But, like, I knew what was well, going to happen. Not, I don't know. Okay. Well. I have chills right now. You don't have chills. I literally have chills. You do chills. not have chills. I have chills right now. You don't have chills. You don't believe me? Yeah. Feel my arm. Feel my arm. No. It's bumpy like a goose. Feel I'm it. not going to feel it. Feel it. Feel it. It's bumpy like do a not. goose. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Oh, it's bumpy. I told you. It's bumpy. <laughs>
harps. I will. Can we all get a round of applause for harps, please? <laughs> They did not sponsor. But we, I do like to. But listen, listen none of that matters, okay? Because I just hope you can forgive me for being late for your sketch. Matt, this will be Matt, can you stop? Up. Can you stop? Yeah. Matt, <laughs> Matt, can you stop? I will stop if you will. Okay. <laughs> you ever apologize to me because you want to know why? I don't know. You're my effing dad, okay? I don't know. <laughs> Why you were late for the sketch to begin with is because that's where I wrote. I wrote in the sketch for you late in for the sketch, you know what I mean? Oh my god, you're I so wrote, right. Yeah. You're right. so right, that's totally true. Ryan's a really good actor. You're such a good actor. <laughs> you're such a good actor. Look at a round of applause for that. You're shy, you're shy. You know Listen, I, I just, I really got me next to you. Yeah, I, I, I love you. I love you too. Yeah. Come here. Is, is there room for one more? So I went to this career fair a couple months ago, and 
For those of you that are trying to find a job, just do a Google search. Like, it's so much easier just to lay in bed and search it because career fairs are just a whole room of hot social anxiety, let me tell you. Um, I went up to this table. I was just walking around. I had my resumes in my hand. And I was walking around, I walked up to this table, and I had all these great little pocket notebooks, like the one I have here, and pens, and if you know me, you know that I'm a big office supply junkie. Like, I collect them, basically. And I was really excited, so I go up to this table, it was for a poultry company or something, but I was like, okay, whatever, like, they have, they have pens, this is cool. I start talking to the lady, and I'm like, hey, so I'm a undergraduate student here at the university, I'm an English and journalism major, and I think I could really help you with any marketing, social media. What type of writing do you have here at your company? And this lady, with her sassy little face, looks up at me, and she's like, I don't really know how much writing you're going to be doing here. And so I was like, oh, that's fine. That's okay. And I took every single one of the notebooks and pens because <laughs> they obviously do not need them. <laughs> My mom is my very best friend. She's great. And she came up a couple weekends ago from Texas, which I'm sure the majority of you here can relate to because it seems like 95% of this university comes from Texas. So it's okay, you don't have to cheer. I know it's embarrassing. Um, so my mom comes up from Texas and it was awesome because the weekend she came up, it was also mom's weekend for Greek life. And I'm not, I'm not really involved in that side of that side of the tracks, you know, I, I found other things. Obviously, I'm a liberal arts major, so. <laughs> Business, whatever, I don't do any of that. Uh, but it's Mom's Weekend, so we got to kind of hop on the Mom's Weekend train, take advantage of some of the deals and all the hot boutiques on the square. It was great, she comes up, we, we start off the day shopping, we start the day with a little bit of wine, then more shopping, and the motto of the entire weekend was, pick out anything you want. Just Pick out anything you want. I'm your mom. I'm here visiting. It's great. I'm your best friend. I want to treat you. You're a poor college student. I get it. I have money. You don't. Let me let me just treat you. Pick out anything you want. We go out to a nice restaurant. I'm looking at the wine list. She's like, get that wine flight. Pick pick out any wine you want. Whatever. We go to a boutique. She's like, oh, that dress is cute. Pick out, pick out anything you want. Like that dress, go for it. We're on Dixon later on in the day after shopping, wine drinking at classy restaurants. We just go out on Dixon. I want to show her kind of the scene. And same thing, like pick out anything you want, any bar, whatever. That was really awesome until we got to Condom Sense. <laughs> For those of you that didn't laugh or don't know what that is, it's a sex shop on Dixon. You should walk past it. They have a ton of great postcards in the window. Um, we walk in, my mom's like, oh, let's go in here, it's an adventure. I was like, okay, that's fine, like, we'll go. I have enough wine in me, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> we walk in the door, and my mom says, honey, pick out anything you want. <laughs> my mom, my best friend. Well, the sales clerk at the front of the store, where the, the, the counter is, the checkout counter, she hears this and she's like, oh, great, come, come over here, I have, a little, I have a little tutorial for you. And so my mom's like, oh, great, free things. And I'm like, do you know where we are? <laughs> I'm not just like at a boutique, like, I mean, maybe some people consider this a boutique, but we go over to the counter, I'm a little reluctant, I kind of feel like a seven-year-old, I'm like, oh, mommy, no. We get up there and this woman's like, give me your hands, give me your hands. I'm like, this is a palm reading? What are we doing? And so she takes my mom's hand and does, she puts it like this, and then she takes my hand and puts it on top, and then she slides a little vibrator right in between. So basically I had sex with my mom, which we weren't best friends before. We certainly got closer that, that minute. So that happens, and this lady's like, oh, I'm gonna add a little lube in here. Give me your finger. And I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> Jesus. And so I give her my finger. And my mom's like, honey, do you want it? Do you want pick? Like I said, you know, I'm your mom. You're poor, I have money, pick up anything you want. I'm like, oh. So I walk over to the lube section, and I'm like, do 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 do. 
okay, this is awkward. I'm going to go over to the dick shaped candy over here. The bachelorette section, I'm looking at all the penis pez, the lollipops, the straws, because sometimes you just got to have a straw in your drink to feel classy. And my mom's like, honey, really? What are you, like, seven? I'm like, well, I'm kind of feeling like it with how awkward I feel. She's like, honey, really? Like, whatever. Pick it up. Get, get this. And so I'm like, okay, I'll get this loop, whatever. So I get it. It's great. We finish up. We walk out the door. We go back to my room watching Netflix. It's a ball. But then I started thinking about it. And you know when you're a kid and you walk into a candy store and your mom or your dad or whoever is the adult in your life taking you to this candy store says, okay, you can pick out one thing, just one special thing. We're here you got an A on your spelling test, just pick out whatever. You want to go for that jawbreaker in the back because you're a big kid and you feel like, dang, this is so cool. That doesn't really translate as well in condom sense with your mom. <laughs> so things got a little interesting, and that's the story of how Things got a little close with my mom that night. So thank you very much. Um, we are going to take a little visit into the office. That's the end of my set, so you guys can clap or whatever. Um, but we are going to take a little trip into an office where people don't have sex with their mothers and um, talk about some icebreakers. Thank you. Icebreakers. Squawk, this first office icebreakers for you. Squawk, what was your high school mascot? Oh, the Bears. Yeah, it was. You're right, Squawk. Uh -huh. 17 office bucks on your desk on Monday. Okay. <laughs> Jake, my man. How many siblings you got? Uh, that'd be three, Mr. Fitzgerald. <laughs> it sure is, yeah. Uh -huh. Three office bucks, yeah. one for each sibling. Okay. Scott. You feeling good? I'm feeling great. You boss. feeling confident? Feeling confident, boss. All right, well, then this next office icebreaker, Scott, is for you. Oh, good. Scott, which blood type is universally recognized to be the coolest? Uh -huh. There is a correct answer. <laughs> well, you see, you kind of said universally in there, so I figured, you know, it's like a hint, so. O's the universal donor. O's the coolest. Ooh, so sorry. The correct answer, Scott, was B. What? Squawk, why don't you take seven office bucks? What? You gotta step it up, newbie. <laughs> <laughs> Since you're new here, though, Scott, we'll give you another chance. Another office icebreaker. All right. Are you ready? All this right. one's a, a physical icebreaker. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Scott. What I need from you right now is for you to do a cartwheel. Oh, well, that would be great, but my doctor says you have a bad back. Don't do cartwheels. Okay, cartwheel. I get it. I'll do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Nicely done, Jake. Scott, please give Jake ten office bucks. You want to have one? Moving on. Squawk, it's your turn again. Clap three times. What? <laughs> yeah! Thank you! Squat, for that kind of performance, I'm gonna go ahead and say it 600 office bucks. 
Jake, you got Scott's last question, so we'll go ahead and get back to him and give him another chance. Okay. Scott, this one's going to be another physical one, but uh, no cartwheels this time, I oh, promise. Okay. Scott, here's what I need you to do. All right. You have five seconds to grow five inches. One, what? two, oh. three, four, five. Time's up, Scott. How much did you grow? Oh. Ooh. So sorry, boy. Not enough. Minus ten. Every oh. time I try to give you another chance, uh, selling me short is not going to help your chances here. Oh, okay. Well, look. I just, I think you're giving them these really softball questions, and I'm like having to physically grow five Softball? <laughs> softball questions? You think I gave them softball questions, I Scott? Right. Are you saying you want a softball question? Yeah, I want a softball question. A softball question? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Scott, you can have a softball question. Great. My granddaughter's gonna play softball. Oh. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Who leads her softball team in slugging percentage? <laughs> Keep in mind, this is my granddaughter Zelda's softball team. My granddaughter Zelda. Oh, well, your first hint didn't do anything for me, but I'm gonna take a wild guess here and say it's your granddaughter Zelda. No. Okay. <laughs> Everyone knows little Zelda can't hit for shit. Oh. <laughs> my Tisha S actually leads the team in slugging percentage. Look at this! Someone who knows about the important things in life. Scott, I'm out of office bugs to give you, but Scott will give you some, I'm sure. I don't have any. Scott, you keep telling me things like I don't have any office bugs, and your questions for me are too hard. You want me to give them a hard question? Yeah, why don't you go ahead? We can get tough. Get him. Jake, what was the name of the German officer who planned to kill Hitler during World War II? Hmm. I'll give you a hint. The operation was codenamed... Valkyrie. Don't listen to his hands, they're bad. Uh, that'd be easy. Uh, ever heard of Klaus Schenk Rolf von Stolfenberg? The pronunciation's nine tips of the law. Don't worry about it. Here's the next one then. Squat, same line of reasoning. Who played the Klaus von Stolfenberg uh, in the movie of the same title, Valkyrie? I'm Tom Cruise. I knew that. Oh, you knew that. I didn't know oh, that. You knew that. Oh, I knew that. You're a big man, Scott. Oh, big man. I'm a man who knows Valkyrie. Oh, okay. And scene for me, Scott. Scene right of the Valkyrie. Oh, well, the joke's on you. I went to orchestra camp, and we played right of the Valkyries. Dun, 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 dun. Kill the rabbit, kill the rabbit. No! That's that Kill the Rabbit song that oh. granddaughter Stella's always singing. Minus ten. Ten what? Listen, Scott. Oh. You're, you're yanking on my chain right now, and I don't like it. I'm this close to just picking up that party hat and sticking it somewhere where no one's ever gonna find it. Oh. <laughs> Jake, if you don't twerk for me right now, I'm giving Scott all of your office bucks. What? Because I'm a wild card. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I was going to anyway, but. Oh. Oh. <laughs> To be honest, that wasn't actually part of the office icebreakers. I just always wanted to watch it work. <laughs> Thanks for playing along. Yeah, no problem. I would literally do anything for this company. And that's the problem, Scott. <laughs> Jake would do anything for this company. Squawk would do anything for this company. Could you say the same? You already owe us 796 office bucks. That's what you owe the three of us. We don't have any room at this office for someone so in debt. Oh. I'm going to give you one more question, I Scott. need one more man. And if you can't answer this question, you might as well pack up your bags. Oh. <laughs> okay, please, look, I need this job. I can't have to pay for a mortgage on more than the other thing. I need the job, man, please. All right. I'll give you one more question. Oh. But, Scott, I'm not going to lie to you. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be real, real hard. Oh. This one's a riddle humdinger, Scott. Oh, a veritable Sphinx's riddle. Sphinx? Why, I wouldn't be surprised if you threw yourself off the precipice of this building onto the cold, hard, unforgiving ground beneath. Oh, sure, so you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then listen to me, Scott. If a train 
Lee San Antonio at what? 9 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> driving at 50 miles per hour. But a second train leaves the gas plant at Jupiter, what? driving at the speed of light. <laughs> Scott, how many goats what? are in the break room? <laughs> right now? Right oh. now. Oh, I was just in the break room. And I can tell you with 100% accuracy, there are seven goats in there, and I'm locking in my answer. Final answer? Final answer. <laughs> Got it? Scott, Scott, Scott. That's my name. I hate to tell you this, Scott. Yeah? But all of those goats were sheep! They were sheep the whole time! Scott, I'm sorry. You have to go. All right. I'll just go. Bye, guys. Great morning. We'll take a nap. <laughs> Scott, wait. We'll bill you later for the office oh. bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Seven goats. Hey, Jake, Squawk, <laughs> there's not any goats in the break room, right? And it's always the same question, right? It's always the same question. And they, they come up to me and they're like, hey, Hanson, um, are you, are, are you gay? <laughs> and like, like, obviously there's nothing wrong with that. I, it's just, you know, I get it, right? I have certain mannerisms. I dress well. <laughs> I just said well instead of good. But it's, it's a little frustrating when, 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 <laughs> When it's like, oh, so I know the difference between chinos and chacos. Are you gay? <laughs> but then I started thinking, you know, on the other side, do gay guys get asked that question? Do do they, do people go up to them and it's like, wow, you know all 32 NFL teams? Are you straight? <laughs> or like, wow, you don't know how to properly express yourself due to societal norms of what masculinity should be, so therefore you repress all of your emotions into a fiery ball of anger that you one day release onto an unsuspecting person and or animal. Are you? <gasps> Straight. <laughs> right, right, because masculinity does that. It's a cage. We can all say that masculinity is a cage, right? Because it tells us, society tells us that, man, you have to be brave. You have to go and get in fights. You have to go outside. And that's, like, that's not me, right? And that's not me. No, 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 not at all. Because I like to be safe. I do. I play, I play it so safe. I play it so safe. Um, for example, I'll be, I'll be going down the road, five miles an hour driving in my car, right down the road, and I'll put on a seatbelt, right? I'll be with my friends, and they'll make fun of me. They're like, Hanson, you don't need a seatbelt. We're only going five miles on the road. I'm like, um, JFK literally died going down the road at five miles an hour. <laughs> right, and it's like, but, but I, understand where I understand where their frustration's coming from. It's kind of it's become a part of my life, the safety thing, right? I'll, I'll go to a movie theater, and I'll have to find like the safest seat, and I'm not even talking about like emergency exits and stuff like that. I literally will go down the seats and try to find the safest one because for me it's like you never know when there could be like a faulty booth just like and then like comes up and pinch you and they're like Hanson stop just sit down I'm like um Lincoln literally died from a faulty booth 
Yeah, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do two presidential assassination jokes right after. Right? <laughs> but safety, safety, right? Safety. Um, safe sex, right? You gotta do it, you gotta do it. Um, guys, did you know that like, one in four people have chlamydia? That's like, that's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. It's, it's a problem, and that, you have to have safe sex, right? It's a problem. I'm such a big, I'm such a big fan of safe sex that I wish I could go back in time and find my mom and dad and hand them a condom and be like, don't make a mistake. But no, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I, um, me and my mom, we get along really well. Um, we think a lot of like politically, right? Um, for instance, you guys all remember that whole Planned Parenthood shenanigans, and um, I asked her, you know, what are, what are your thoughts on abortion? She said, why don't you ask your brother? I was like, I have a brother. Oh, no. <laughs> Just gonna do two presidential assassination jokes and then do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Because guys, me and my mom, like I said, we are very similar. Um, there is one thing that we disagree on, um, and that's BuzzFeed. Now see, she hates BuzzFeed, and I love BuzzFeed. I love it, and, and, and this is my argument to her, right? I don't think she hates BuzzFeed, I think she hates clickbait, and I think that's what we all hate, or you guys, I love it. But my argument with that is, is we can't blame BuzzFeed for that, right? Clickbait's been around forever, right? BuzzFeed's not, it's, it's not new for them. And some of you guys might not believe me, but I have a few examples, right? 185 reasons why the Articles of Confederation suck. Alexander Hamilton, right? <laughs> 90 theses is on why the Catholic Church needs to reform. Number three will shock you, Martin Luther, right? <laughs> 10 things you gotta stop doing now. God, right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, yeah. Um, guys, I have just one more thing. I'm sure many of you are students, some of you may not be, but I'm sure many of you guys also have Snapchat. Yeah, 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 and I'm sure many of you guys have seen that the campus story is back. Now, there's a little thing that you guys might not know about the campus story on Snapchat. It's that I've made it four times on the campus story. Yeah, yeah, I've made it four times, but guys, I have a little announcement, and that announcement is tonight, we're gonna make it five. Because what we got right here is my cell phone. It's been recording on it this whole time. And uh, what we're going to do with this is uh, I'm going to pull up Snapchat, and uh, you guys are also going to pull up Snapchat, and we're going to follow the little formula I came up with. Now, this formula is real simple. It's you and three other people. We have way more than three other people. It's you and three other people, and all you do is you just start chanting campus story. You just start chanting campus story over and over and over. And what I'm thinking is we turn on these house lights right now, Oh, look at that. It's like we rehearsed it. And then we bring out all the rest of the LTF members, and they're all going to come out here as well like we rehearsed. And they're also going to have their cell phones, and you guys are also going to take out your cell phones, and you guys are also going to all bring out Snapchat. And I got mine right here, ready to go. You guys, I don't know if you guys are going, because you guys got to stand up. And it's real simple. We, we start off small. We start off small, right? It's just it's real simple. Campus story. Campus. And then, and then you build and build and build. And then what's going to happen is everybody around here is also going to be recording and we're all going to send 500, there's 500 people here, we're going to send 500 snaps of the same thing to the campus story and we're all getting on the campus story. Are you ready? Alright, here we go. Everybody bring out your phones. If you don't have Snapchat, you can go ahead and leave now. But here we go guys, ready? On count of three, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna count off on three and we're gonna remember, it's real simple, just can't do this. Alright guys, I'm gonna pay it to you guys. Here we go. Three, two, one. Campus story, campus story, campus story, campus story, campus story, campus story, campus And just submit that. Yeah, you got it. Thank you guys. <laughs> Up next, LTF is doing what we are known for, improv comedy. Can you just stay? Yeah, just put it I'm going to put my phone down, and then I'm going to come. We're going to close tonight, guys, with, the, uh, with uh, a little bit of long-form improv.
Uh, and we have a really special guest for you tonight. We're super excited to, to have him here with us. Uh, founding member, he was here from the beginning of Laugh Track and Field. Now he's off being a big shot somewhere else. Uh, but he still has time for the little people. Give it up for Cameron Clark! <laughs> Today it's going to get us going uh, so that we can uh, have inspiration for our improv. Can I get a one word suggestion for uh, Cameron to talk about? Laundry. Shred. You got a good laundry story? <laughs> laundry. We all do it. <laughs> we all do it. We all have great laundry stories. We all know that. When I think of laundry, um, so many stories come to mind. <laughs> Where do I start? Um, you know, I should probably, just before I start the monologue, um, which I'm trained to do, um, I go to school at, a, at an improv school um, in Los Angeles, California, um, where they teach us how to do this. And um, round of applause, how many of you have done a monologue before? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Not many claps. Um, <laughs> Because the first thing they'll tell you is it's one of the hardest things you can do on the stage or off. Um, just <laughs> before I start the monologue, again, usually, usually you thank the person that brought you up. So Justin, um, thank you so much for inviting me all the way out from Los Angeles, California to travel here just for this one monologue. Um, Thank you so much. man speech. It's customary to uh, thank the, the groom that called you up. <laughs> so uh, uh, all that said, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, give you a, a good thanking. Uh, Seth, <laughs> Seth, you're, you're such a good guy. You, every single time that, uh, Seth, bring, bring it in. Sure, yeah. Seth, I, I hate you. What? Yeah, I hate you. Wait, what? Yeah, I'm trying to do this trying to do this best man toast and trying to just let everybody know, like, this guy and this marriage I supported, and, uh, you know, I hope that they find happiness forever, but I, 
just, man, I'm blanking on happy things to say about you because every interaction you've ever had has been pretty miserable. For both of all! Hey, can we get on with the sketch? <laughs> Please, wrap it up! Roger, you had to bring your dad, and now you're telling me that you hate me? My dad's the only guy that can put up with you. He taught you to play baseball and not me. Uh, <laughs> and you made me your best man and expected- Shut up! <laughs> dad, you wanna do this? You wanna do this toast? I could do it better. Be my guest. Oh, well, I mean, only if he's okay with it, I guess. I wasn't okay with you teaching him how to hit home runs and not me, but whatever. Well, he was better at that, too, so. Uh, <laughs> all right, loosen up, kiddo. Hey, how's it going? Uh, good, good. Really good. Glad, glad, well, we made it. This guy made it. <laughs> That's weird, right? Suddenly you hit this son of a bitch off the stage. Yeah. Dad, stop! You're ruining my son's wedding and I'm not okay with it. Hey. All right, okay. Hey. Just because I don't know anything about baseball yeah. and you're some kind of oh, oh, Babe Ruth slugger don't mean you can just come in and teach him how to hey. hit the home. So the weird thing is every time I meet you I never know if you're drunk or just have a weird speech pattern. <laughs> you know what I mean? so, speech pattern thing. Yeah. Well, I'll, drink, act, to, I'll act, drink to that, I guess. You gotta act like you're the only one who teaches people things. Your son, he's over the Get back, get back. I know who he is. You remember him? <laughs> yeah, I know. This, this little rascal, this little alfalfa stinker over here, he didn't know how to separate the colors from the, um, from the whites. From the white when he was doing it. He didn't know that. You didn't teach the boy laundry. We can all relate to laundry. <laughs> he taught me wedding. He always taught me to yell white excitedly when the situation calls for it. Well, let's not dwell on that part of it. That's, I don't know. That's not the part that I wanted to. You don't tell people about that, okay? I didn't do it right. I told you, you just vote Trump. That's all you do. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, what? I'm just he's my he's Okay, like, but it's my wife's wedding and mine too. <laughs> Thank you. 
I literally just told you you've been doing some rounds of some things, and we're here to get you on this symbol. We were sending you... Good God, lady, you're still talking! <laughs> we're sending her to Horizons, and this is a big deal. So... Oh, my. <laughs> He'll be back. So we're sending you a new Horizon. Yeah, this is, this is just the first step on the journey. So you brought me to a bus stop to tell me this? As an intervention. Yeah, you know, all of the best interventions happen at bus stops. Oh. <laughs> Come to that other intervention at that one bus stop. <laughs> I love cocaine! <laughs> yeah, I love all the cocaine! Let's do all the cocaine and then get on this bus! Is that okay with you three? Yellow route. I love the bus!